Good morning. Welcome to video worship this morning on this eighth Sunday after Pentecost. I'm Pastor Christine Eisner from Kvitsite and Big Bend Lutheran Churches in Milan, Minnesota. Today's service is from the Southwestern Minnesota Synod Office. And please note that the Lord's Prayer is a different version than we usually use. A copy of today's bulletin is on the Kvitsite website. The offering and offering prayer are included in the service. We are continuing to do ministry during this time and appreciate your financial support. During this time that we are not gathering for worship, you may mail your offering to the church or give online through the church websites. Big Bend is holding parking lot worship services with an FM transmitter at 9 a.m. on Sundays through August 16th. Then they will switch to 10 o'clock on August 23rd. All are welcome to join. You are also welcome to bring your own lawn chair and sit outside, socially distanced from others. Kvitside will reopen for worship in the sanctuary on August 23rd. They will have nine o'clock worship and Big Ben will have 10 o'clock parking lot worship. Next Sunday on August 2nd, Big Ben is having parking lot worship at nine o'clock with communion. The video service will be posted on the Kvitside Facebook page and church website at 9. I will continue to post worship videos on the Kvitside Facebook page and church website, even after returning to in-person worship. We're trying to figure out how to record services beginning August 9th. Video services will likely be posted later on Sunday, and we will keep you updated by the website the times the videos will be posted. The funeral for Billy Thompson will be held on Friday, July 31st at 10.30 at Burns Park in Milan. Please bring your own lawn chairs. In case of rain, the funeral will be held at Kvitside Lutheran Church. Visitation will be held on Thursday, July 30th from 5 to 7 at Kvitside Lutheran Church. Social distancing will be observed and face masks are encouraged. Today's service comes from the Southwestern Minnesota Synod Office. The, the gospel text is Luke 10, and the theme is, comes from that text. If you enter a town and it welcomes you, eat whatever is set before you. Heal the sick and tell them, the kingdom of God is near you now. We join the uh, video worship from the Synod Office. Hello, this is Bishop John Anderson. We're really grateful you're able to uh, use this worship service today. I want to welcome you to the service. Uh, your Synod staff is grateful for the life of your congregation and the ways that you are living out your faith in this very hard and complicated season. We're trying to figure out how to live in the midst of this virus while protecting ourselves and those people who are most vulnerable and I want to thank you for all your efforts in that uh, in of that kind secondly this is a season full of many losses we could talk about them one of the losses you maybe haven't thought about is that your synod wasn't able to gather in its assembly so today we're going to use the text and some music that we intended to use at our synod assembly and lift up the themes that some of the themes we hope to work with May the worship service be a blessing to you, and may God continue to inspire and guide you. Now let's quiet our hearts and minds for a moment now as we prepare to worship God. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, 
known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake. God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. By your word, eternal God, your creation sprang forth, and we were given the breath of life. By your word, eternal God, death is overcome. Christ is raised from the tomb, and we are given new life in the power of your spirit. May we boldly proclaim the good news in our words and in our deeds, rejoicing always in your powerful presence through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Our Bible story today is a really fun one, so we're going to tell it in a fun way. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together, the disciples, in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a violent wind. Divided tongues as a fire appeared on them. And a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Je parle français, et tu? Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are these not all who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? All were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Listen to what I say. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Now, isn't this a wild story? Jesus' disciples are sitting around in their living rooms, and all of a sudden a wind comes, and fire is on their heads. And all of a sudden they're speaking languages that they didn't even know before. And we get to translate God's love in whatever way God gives us gifts to do so. For the disciples, it was different languages. For us, it could be our actions or the way we treat people. But the Holy Spirit is with us, moving in us, moving around us, and allowing us to share the good news of Jesus loving everyone in the whole world with everyone we meet. Let's pray. Dear God, Thank you for sending the Holy Spirit and for raising in us new ways to share your love. Please uh, let us love others in our daily lives, people we know and people we haven't even met yet. Amen. Have a great day. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 10th chapter. After this, the Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. If not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, 
The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its street and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet, we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace to you and peace, sisters and brothers in Christ Jesus, living in the good news and sent to proclaim the good news that we know through Jesus, guided by the Holy Spirit. Amen. God's Holy Spirit sometimes is working to calm us down and comfort us, but God's Spirit also works to stir things up, to agitate us, setting us free from our bonds, calling us to faith, sending us to share. In the gospel lesson for today, the church, the community of Jesus, is deployed. God sends people out like you and me. God works through people that God sends into this world to serve the mission of God. Notice that Jesus did not say to the 70 when Jesus sent them out, go build 70 buildings. No, uh, that isn't how he gave birth to the church. That isn't how the Pentecost story goes either. That's not the message they received that day. Instead, uh, Jesus gives them directions to go out two by two with a deep peace that they are serving the will of God and announcing the presence and the work of our gracious God. We are living in a time that's closer to the realities of the early church than we might imagine. God did great things back then. Look for God's presence today doing great things here and now. Congregations today and pastors today sometimes slide into an assumption that our mission is to keep the church of the past going as it has been. That's not the mission Jesus gives in the lesson from Luke. We can overfocus on our history and traditions. We can fall into thinking that we are successful if we can afford to have a pastor and keep a building. Yet those are simply tools that exist to serve a deeper goal. And our goal is to proclaim the good news that we have a gracious God who has come near and is here with us now. In Jesus, God reveals who God is and what God longs for in our world and, 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 and in our lives through Jesus. And God's Spirit works through people, through ministers, through God's church to grow and sustain the lives of Christ followers, loving their neighbors and loving God's world. I love the lesson from Luke where Jesus sends people out two by two ahead of Jesus. He sends them out together. There's no self-sufficiency. And we would be wise to remember to not try to go it alone in our own spiritual lives or in our own ministries. In fact, it's better to take somebody with us when we go and visit the sick and study scripture or when we practice works of love. Jesus also does not teach that you got to have a three-year seminary degree before you can be sent out to do ministry. In fact, Jesus sends out people empowered by the Holy Spirit to proclaim the presence and the work of our gracious God and sends them out ahead of him. Jesus sends us out into our everyday lives to minister by loving our neighbors and sharing the good news, sharing the good news that God is for us and with us here and now. Your call to be a minister of Jesus happened in your baptism and it continues all the day of your, days of your life. We're moving deeper into a shift in how we imagine and do church. We're shifting from the last several decades where we focused on a ministry of performance, where the pastor does the ministry for a congregation, towards a ministry of participation, where the church focuses on equipping the baptized ones. We're going back to the models of the early church, the church exists to feed you and grow you all deeper in faith and hope and love. It also exists to encourage you and support you to practice your faith and sends you out like the 70 into the midst of life to share and develop your particular vocations and ministries, your contributions to building up the body of Christ and to loving God's world. The Spirit is not only working in your pastor, the Spirit doesn't only work through leaders in your church or people you perceive to have bigger or deeper faith, but God works through all of us, stirring us up, 
gifting you all and gifting all of God's people to follow Jesus, love one another, and love God's world. In Luke, the author says this work will be dangerous. We're sent, we are sent out like lambs among wolves, Jesus says. Ministry will make you vulnerable. The world is dangerous in more ways than the virus that has our attention these days. It's dangerous in more ways than the insidious sin of, of racism, the virus of racism, which takes on communal and personal and systemic forms. And we need and are thankful for the ongoing guidance and work of God's Spirit when we feel vulnerable, when we feel unsure of what path we should take in our personal life or in our lives as a community of faith. But following Jesus opens us up, it cracks us open so that we care about God's world in all of its brokenness, like God cares for us and God calls us to love our neighbors like God loves us, all of our neighbors. And we remember as we do live out our faith life that sometimes the wolves actually are hiding inside of us personally or inside of our community of faith. We have to have that awareness about us. And Jesus in today's lesson teaches us that we need to be able to travel light in God's mission field. In a time like this, we're working fast and we're trying to sort out what matters and what does not. You know, crisis times are a time of threat, but they're also a time of opportunity. So we have to evaluate what will serve the gospel as we move forward as God's church and what has served the church well in the past, but won't serve us in the coming chapter of our ministry. Winston Churchill said that a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. So be sure to hold on to and carry the essentials of following Jesus along with you. And I think we should carry along the gifts of our Lutheran movement. But remember that God keeps reforming each of us and God keeps reforming God's church to serve in all of the many cultures of this world and in all of the different times that we have been living in and through. God continues to send you and your community of faith to grow Christians deep and wide in faith and engage the challenges of our time and our communities. Remember, God's Spirit is here to stir you up, to comfort, to protect, and to guide you. Jesus did not leave you and me alone. Now, we often read this text from Luke 10 when we're talking about the work of inviting people to consider ordained or rostered ministry. While we do need God's Spirit to call out pastors and other leaders for God's church in this time, this lesson is about needing laborers for the harvest is a call to all the baptized, not just some. Jesus is talking to all the 70 and to all of us when he says, your attempts to love and proclaim the good news may not be welcomed sometimes. You may not be the right messenger. It may not be the right time for people to hear the message that you're carrying. Trust that God will, there will make another time for you or God will use another messenger to do God's work. When we're doing ministry, we have to trust God and know that it isn't always going to happen when we're trying to do ministry in our life. Jesus came, loved, taught, healed, suffered, and died, and was raised again. Jesus sent God's Spirit to be with people back in time and today, and he sends us to cure and care for those who are sick in physical, emotional, spiritual, or relational ways. The kingdom, the reign of God, has come near in Jesus, and it continues to come near in the ongoing work of God's Spirit, of Christ's Spirit, God's Spirit gives us the power to trust even when we're full of questions and we're living with doubts. God's Spirit gives us the power to forgive sins and trust that God will do the work of healing and restoration and use our hands. God gives us the power to be healers with words of encouragement and reminders that God's grace has claimed us and will never let us go. And we share that good news of God's gracious love with everyone. Sharing that God is faithful to us and here with us now in our lives is our ministry. 
and our response to God's presence and work sing out a hymn of gratitude. As Luther said, to be an evangelist is as simple as one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread, and that's what Jesus has called us to do. The kingdom, the reign of God has come near and Jesus keeps drawing near to you and me. My favorite image of the Holy Spirit is a memory I have of my father down in the sheep barn blowing breath into a newly born lamb that did not start breathing like most do upon entering the world. Dad cleared the, the lamb's throat with his finger. Then he stuck a piece of straw down the throat to try to make it gag, but that didn't work. And then he gently blew into the lamb's mouth. And when that did not work, we were all getting scared. He slapped the lamb on his chest a couple times and blew breath in again more forcefully. And all of a sudden, the lamb that was as good as dead suddenly took a breath and started to breathe. And I remember being down in the sheep barn a few days later and watching the same lamb bouncing around the sheep pen, having fun. God comes through God's Holy Spirit and blows new life uh, into you and me personally, into our communities day after day. And God's presence stirs us up sometimes and God's Spirit comforts us other days. And God sends you and me to be angels. That word literally means messengers. Messengers to this world that needs to know the good news that God is for us and that God is with us, just like we do day after day after day. Imagine that God can and does and will use you and me. Through Christ Jesus, God's Spirit can make all things possible. Amen. We confess the faith of our church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turn into God's promise of new life. We pray for the renewal of the church, the world, and all of creation. Gracious Savior, enliven the church to speak your words of forgiveness and salvation in every language and tongue. Pour out your spirit on witnesses of every age, gender, and nationality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Gracious Lord, sustain and encourage all bishops, especially Elizabeth and John, all pastors and deacons, all leaders in your church, all servants of your people. Deepen the sense of call for all the baptized in their everyday ministry. Call forth some to serve as ministers of word and service and ministers of word and sacrament. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great eternal justice. Send your breath to all nations and people. Bless those who care for the sick, all those who grow, supply, and prepare our food, and all whose work is dangerous or difficult. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Come Holy Spirit, dispel human arrogance and establish leaders who are humble of heart. Speak peace into all the world. Overcome prejudice and fear. Bless our partners in the Southeastern Diocese of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in South Africa. Move us to support Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services and all those who provide aid to immigrants and refugees. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. No sparrow falls without you knowing. You hear us when we cry to you. Bring clarity and hope to those living with dementia, anxiety, depression, or addiction. Accompany those who feel weak and worn. Give comfort to those who are near death. Hear our prayers for all we name before you. Hear us, Lord. Your mercy is great. Blessed Trinity, your very nature is relationship. You make us children of God and joint heirs with Christ. We praise you for all the saints, you who called on your name and now know the fullness of your presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We commend these and all our prayers to you, O God. Come near to us in your saving help. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. This is a time when your congregation will collect its offering and you'll give that offering in a way that you know how to do in your local context. Thanks for your generosity. But I want to take a moment to also thank you for your living out of your faith life as you love your God and as you love your family, as you love your neighbors, as you love your community. I want to give thanks to God for the ways that you're generous as you live out the many callings God has given you in your life. I also want to give thanks to God for how your congregation is serving the gospel and stewarding the good news in its local context in ways that we're grateful for. I want to give thanks to God for our conferences where pastors and lay leaders gather and support one another. I love it when I hear stories of churches supporting one another and pastors and ministers doing the same. Thank you so much. We give thanks to God for your support of your synod. Your synod staff can only do the work we do because of your support, but we're surrounded by generous people who are willing to give of their time to be a part of our governance and who also 
grow the synod stronger by their work of building up God's church. And finally, I'd want to bring you gratitude uh, from our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton for your support of the whole churchwide ministry that literally goes around the globe. We give thanks to God for who you are and for your generosity in many ways. Thank you so much. Sometimes life is hard the road oh so long the load so heavy no strength to carry on but in such moments when I can't do a thing God sends me this promise and I start to sing God's love is holding on to me Holding on to me Even when I'm sick and tired And I don't know what to do God's love is holding on to me, holding on to me. He's holding on and he'll never let me go. It might be an illness or some other stress. Worst kind of fear or the pain of a death. But in such moments when all my strength is gone, peace comes from singing this simple song. love is holding on to me holding on to me even when I've lost my grip he's holding on to me God's love is holding on to me holding on to me Holding on and he'll never let me go. Even in the darkest night when the shadows descend. Even in the silence when you can't find a friend. Even in those moments when you question why, even when all hope seems lost and you would rather die, remember God's love is holding on to you. Holding on to you Even when you're oh so tired You don't know what to do God's love is holding on to you Holding on to you He's holding on and he'll never let you go God's love is holding on to you, holding on to you, even when you've lost your grip, he's holding on to you, God's love is holding on to you.
he'll never let you go. So for each prayer of thanks that'll conclude for your word of life, O God, please join me in responding, we give you thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, rekindle your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, deepen our love. For the sake of a world in need, faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered together by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May our Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to what is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.